Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and as always, told out of voice of radio, so today we need to take a look at some new Stage 2 Pokemon. We've got a new tool, we've got a new talent flame, but I want to start off with a new Kling Clang. I like Kling Clang. I'm a fan of Kling Clang, and I like this new Kling Clang. It's pretty gosh darn good. Now, what we've got is a really nice ability. Once during your turn, if your opponent has a Stage 2 Pokemon in play, you may play this card from your hand onto your bench. This is actually really nice. I like this very much indeed. Because it's not really a Stage 2. It's a basic. Except you cannot start with it. And it does count as an evolution Pokemon. Now, I'm not sure if this is actually going to end up being good enough. But i got to mention it right off the bat here. This works with Torterra. Torterra, of course, which you do have to evolve up manually. Does 50 damage for each of your evolution Pokemon in play. And this totally counts as an evolution Pokemon. And therefore, in theory... If you can evolve up this normally, manually, well then Kling Clang is going to make it a billion times better. And obviously Grotal is going to help you with your Torterra as well. Just lets you search for those grass Pokemon. That's kind of a nice little bonus. But if you're playing a deck like that, this is going to work. But obviously it's not going to be as good as a regular Stage 2 because you're cheating it into play with an ability. But we're seeing more and more of these Stage 2s nowadays that you can put into play a little bit cheekily. Like the Luxray, for instance, with Swelling Flash, that if you've got more prize cards remaining than your opponent, you can put it straight onto the bench, the one from Paldea Evolved. So, yeah. I think we're going to keep seeing more of these. And look, the Luxray is seeing a bit of play out there. In the current Japanese metagame, it's seeing a bit more play than it has done in the past. And I'm just saying, these kind of things are cool. Also, Torterra now with Luxray and Kling Clang could be kind of legit. And I do kind of like the attack as well. Two energy, 130, discard all energy from this Pokemon. It's not phenomenal, but again, we expect it to be a slightly worse Stage 2 because it's got the ability that lets you play it not as a Stage 2. But really here, it, it's kind of, it's a bit weird, right? Because my first reaction here is, well, I kind of want to play this with double turbo, so it's a single energy attachment. But then, of course, if I play it with double turbo, then it means that I only do 110. Oh, but that's the perfect number to KO Chempao with weakness. And you'll easily get back Scalibur. And against those two decks, this is pretty good. The thing to remember is that this ability is activated if your opponent's playing a stage 2. Well, Bascalibur's a stage 2. So in any deck that is either playing double turbo energy, or is playing some kind of energy acceleration, like ironically Chen Pao itself, this is actually a really nice option. Playing this as a one of, like, if you're worried about the Chen Pao Mirror, and look, I don't know who's worried about the Chen Pao Mirror, but do remember that metagames shift as we go, right? Just because you're not worried now doesn't mean you won't be worried in the future. But in the Chen Pao Mirror, this is a legitimately good card. Because you play it down, attach with Baxcalibur, and take a KO on a Chen Pao using a single prizer. I really like it. If you're hitting for weakness, this is really good. And if you are just playing any kind of deck which can either play double turbo or some kind of energy acceleration, this is a good single prize attacker. You're doing 130 damage or 110 with double turbo, and you got 140 HP. As a quote-unquote basic attacker, this is really very good. And in terms of, well, you know, you can only actually play it if you're playing against a stage 2 deck, yes... That is correct. But you know what? There's a lot of stage 2 decks around right now. Gardevoir is a stage 2 deck. Charizard is a stage 2 deck. Dragapult is a stage 2 deck. Lugia with Archeops. And fine, you might be cheating it into play, but it's still a stage 2 Pokemon. Oh, look. 
That is a lot. Right now, according to LimitlessTCG.com, right now, five of the top six decks involve stage twos. And I'm not saying it's going to be that way forever, but I'm saying it is that way right now. There have been long periods where we've not had viable stage two Pokemon. Where no one's playing stage twos, and this card would be aggressive turbo garbage. But in the format we're in at the moment, where there's actually a lot of stage two decks around, seeing a lot of play, this is actually a card that might work a lot more than you might think. And the attack is not great, but it's not terrible. And actually, I kind of like this. I'm giving it four Wossies. It might be overly optimistic, and I don't really care. I think this has a genuine, legitimate chance to be a good tech. And because of the ability, you can literally just play it as a one-off in your deck. And this could give you a lot of value. But there are some other cards we need to talk about as well. Including a new tool, which now I've translated the meaning of the tool, but I'm afraid I've not translated the name. Oh no, wait, no, I have. I just had a look. It's Gravity Stone. It's literally Gravity Stone. Cool. Okay. Which is what Antoine said. And they're really good at this. But I promise you, I know the words gravity and stone. And this totally works. And it's a tool. And if it is attached to a Pokemon in the active spot, both active Pokemon have their retreat costs increased by one. Oh, that, that's kind of cool. Honestly, that's really quite nice. Because there will be some times where this is super annoying. Take Comfey, for instance. Lost Zone sees a bunch of play. Comfey is kind of integral to the whole, you know, Lost Zone engine. And they'll play a bunch of switching cards, don't get me wrong. But it means that they are going to, at some point, they're going to be retreating. Usually once per turn, they're going to try and use that retreat to get an extra use of Comfey. Well, now that's not going to be the way they do it. You, you attach to retreat, that's not going to work. And all of a sudden, this gets a little bit better. Anything... Using Rescue Board here. Rescue Board reduces your retreat cost by one. Generally played on single retreat cost Pokemon. Well, now all of a sudden, they're not single retreat. They're double retreat. Which means that putting this on the Pokemon reduces its retreat cost to one. Which, which doesn't work. And now they've got to pay more to retreat. And this gives me another opportunity to mention my old friend Spidops. Oh, yeah. I've always got a lot of love for Spidox because the full art of it was my first official reveal for the Pokemon trading card game. First card I ever officially revealed. So it means I have love for it. And it increases retreat cost while doing 90 plus 30 more for each energy in your opponent's active Pokemon's retreat cost. And actually, yeah, anything that does more damage based on retreat cost, this is going to be pretty good. Minior is a basic Pokemon that does a similar kind of thing. Came around in Paradox Rift. Had the stunning illustration rare. So maybe that's going to be a lot better here. And I still think Minior's probably a while away from actually being legit. Without any kind of support. As a deck on its own. But against some Pokemon this is going to be really good. And we've got a bunch of stuff that can increase retreat costs. Like Spidops. And like this tool now. And the Wasteland. Calamitous Snowy Wasteland, to be specific, that increases the retreat cost of each basic non-fighting Pokemon by one. And you can now get to the point where you're actually popping retreat costs up quite a lot. And then maybe something like Spidop starts becoming less terrible? Look, I'm still holding out hope Spidops is good one day, alright? But maybe it's not that. Although, as a side note, I'm giving this one, again, four Wossies. I think this is a useful tool that some decks will love. I don't know if it's necessarily going to be for stuff like Spide Ops, but certainly to frustrate your opponent and take away single retreaters or free retreaters in which they're relying. Oh, yeah, this is good. But And control decks are obviously going to love this. But also, maybe it's the new Talon Flame. Maybe the new Talon Flame is going to be the difference here. Well, we've got 140 HP. Free retreat, although if you put the tool on, it doesn't get free retreat anymore. And for two energy, you do 110, which is meh. But if your opponent's active Pokemon's retreat cost is two or above, then you do 220 instead. Okay. It's all right. It's not bad. It's not perfect, though, really, is it? 
I, I have some concerns about this one. My biggest issue here is that 220 used to be the magic number for Pokemon Vs. But now we've moved on to EXs as a bunch of really relevant ones like Iron Hands and Roaring Moon are good examples, where they've got 230 HP. So now all of a sudden 220 isn't actually enough, it's not the key number it used to be, you need to hit 230. But again, this is a Pokemon on which you're really going to be wanting to attach double turbo, but that brings you down to 200 and oh. Yeah. That's um bit of a problem. And it's still a stage two. So I like this card. I like the fact that you can use any energy acceleration. I like the fact you do 220 for little energy. But the fact is, the number here is what hurts me. I don't like 220 as opposed to 230. And I don't like that the energy I'm going to probably use actually puts me down to 200. And 200 isn't enough. And if I'm using, you know, something like Dragapult does 200. But then I'm also dropping 6 damage counters and I've got 320 HP and no weakness. And I go, well, I don't love 200, but actually... With everything else born in mind, 200 is fine. This is not that. You don't have nearly as much HP. You're not doing extra damage with the attack. All you're doing is 200. And I think this ends up being not quite good enough. I'd like to be wrong. I'm giving this thing three and four Wossies. We don't give half Wossies. That would be barbaric. But this is a big what if Pokemon for me. What if it was a stage 1 that did this, not a stage 2? What if it did 230 rather than 220? Things along those lines. I don't think it's terrible, but I think it misses the mark a little bit. However, the tool, I think the tool is legit. And I think Kling Klang is absolutely legit as well. I love Pokemon that can be easily teched in as a one-off that you will never start with. So they can't ruin your start. And I think it hits a good enough weakness. And I just think there's enough to like about Kling Clang here. I could be absolutely miles off base. But I do think we're going to see Kling Clang popping up into winning deck lists. I'm excited about that. But I'm also excited about what you think about these cards. So let me know your thoughts, feelings, opinions, and anything else in the comment section. Good us. Be nice. And then make sure you like this video. Subscribe to this channel. Follow me on Twitter at the Wasi. That's where we talk about Pokemon and a whole bunch of other card games. And please do consider checking out patreon.com slash ptcgradio, where you can support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all kinds of fun things. And get shoutouts on the channel like the lovely Unknown One, who's been a supporter of ours for a while now and is a very lovely person. So shout out to them for the support and the loveliness. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.